Welcome back to another camera chow. Today, we're going to be talking about my settings I use for my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Yes, this is a request video from two of my friends, Mike and Rich, who wanted to know how I set up my camera uh, because they have the same cameras I do and they just want to know every single setting that I do. And to be honest, it doesn't actually take that long. I'm going to factory reset the camera. It's probably going to take under 10 minutes to go through every setting that I like to change on my camera when I get it. Uh, the longest part is probably adding the LUTs. Uh, so without further ado, I don't want to waste anyone's time. Let's get into the video. So first, I'm going to reset the camera back to its factory settings. And to do this, I'm going to go through the menu here on Setup and hit Reset Camera Settings. And this is going to take it back to as if it was a new camera, apart from the firmware. That won't roll back. So the first thing to choose is language. I'm going to choose English. And these are the default settings that you get. Uh, but when I got my camera, it was actually like this. The screen was blank. So to get the options back, swipe up. Now going to the menu on this button here is the record menu. This is the main menu. I'm always recording in Blackmagic RAW. If I'm doing my YouTube stuff, usually 12 to 1, sometimes 8 to 1. Client work, definitely 8 to 1 or 5 to 1 if it's special. I never really do 3 to 1. I'm always filming in 6K. For ProRes, I'm using Ultra HD, and I usually ask the person what kind of flavor of ProRes they want. So go on to the next page. Dynamic range, I'm using the film setting here, and the sensor area is 6K. Now for project frame rate, you can choose whatever you want depending on what you want at the end of it. So uh, you know, you could use 24, 30, up to 50 in this mode. I'm usually doing 23, 9, 7, 6. For preferred card for recording, I'm choosing my external drive, which would be my SSD. Off-speed recording, uh, this activates this setting here, so you can change this depending on what frame rate you want to film at. On the next page, we have options for time-lapsing and detail sharpening, which is always off in RAW. Apply LUT in file works for ProRes files only, so turn that on if you want to have your LUT applied to the ProRes files that you record. So that's it for record. So going to the next page, monitor. Now this controls what kind of information is displayed on the screen. And you have lots of options for this, which is great. So LCD, I always have the grid on. And some of these things you can change on the main page as well. HDMI, this is anything on your HDMI monitor. I turn grid on as well for that one. So going back to LCD and the next page, status text is on by default. You can control if you want meters or the codec. I put my screen brightness up to 100% here. On HDMI, I'm going to turn status text on as well. Same cinematographer, it's just got more information that is useful to me. Go into the audio tab. I love the audio settings on the Blackmagic, it's great. So you can change like left and right channels, it's great. So usually I'm using 3.5 mil mono because I'm getting my sound from an external device. And I use the mono line because I don't need stereo. The other option that I would use if I'm using XLR directly into the camera, I'll set it to XLR mic. And for this option, you need to go to the next page and turn XLR phantom power on. If you don't, you'll not be sending power to your mic. Now, Blackmagic say you should turn this off if you're not using it. So I'm going to leave it on for now. But if you go back to the other settings, if you change it back to 3.5 mil on both the channels, what you'll find is that the XLR phantom power turns off automatically. So just remember that if you do plan to go back to using XLR again, even though you turn that phantom power on at the start, you need to go back and turn it on again. So just if you're having problems with the sound, just make sure to check that setting is still on. I'm going to put it back to the 3.5 mil mono for now. So we've got headphone volume and speaker volume. I normally turn speaker volume down because I don't want to hear the sound coming out the camera. But it's useful to turn it on for clients or whatever if they want to hear if the sound came out OK. Going to setup now, I use shutter angle as my shutter measurement instead of shutter speed, so it always stays at 180 degrees. Flicker-free shutter, I have that at 60 because I'm based in Korea, and that works with our electricity. Time code drop frame, I don't use. We have the function button, so F1, I have it set as toggle, and false color on LCD and HDMI. And I love false color, so I'll just show you what it looks like. It really shows you the exposure here, so hitting that first button uh, turns it on and off. For F2, it, I have the default setting, so display LUT, uh, LCD, and HDMI. You can just toggle on and off your LUT if you want to see it flat. And for F3, I don't have it on frames guide. I have it on HDMI only, um, so toggle off the LCD one, and I change it to clean feed. 
And the reason why I do that is because it gets rid of all the status text and everything and just lets me focus on just what the camera is seeing uh, without all the information on top. So I really like that one. Next, uh, tire light is set to on. LED brightness stays normal at medium. Auto dim display is off. Um, and for playback settings, you can choose between all clips or single clip. And this is useful if you want all the clips to keep playing through. Uh, or if you just want to loop like one single clip over and over again. Next page, Bluetooth. I have that turned on because I like to use lots of Bluetooth devices with my uh, cameras. Uh, this page, uh, I only use the reset camera settings to show you. I don't touch anything else. And that's it for setup. So presets, I don't have any presets currently. They were just removed, but I don't really use presets anyway. Uh, but they can be useful for, for some people. Uh, for LUTs, um, as we're at 7.3 on the camera, uh, we have all the Gen 5 LUTs already on the camera by default. And this is where you add your own LUT. So go to import. You need your LUTs on an SD card or on an SSD. Mine are on my SSD here. And you can see the list of LUTs on the SSD. So mine's on the second page. I'm going to add the normal battery LUT, this V3 here. I click import, and it's going to copy it from the SSD to the camera. Now it appears in the list of LUTs on the camera. So to use it, I click on it and then click the little tick icon here. And now that is activated the LUT. So if I go back and click on the toggle 3D LUT button, uh, this is now displaying the new battery LUT, which is now on the camera. So if I pull down the f-stop, you can see it a bit better. Uh, F4, there you go. Um, great LUT, yeah, easy toggle on and off. Another thing I like to do on this screen is clicking the battery icon here. And if you do that, you get a readout of the voltage, which is really useful when you know what voltage the camera dies at, instead of just trusting a battery bar there. So HFR mode is toggled by this button, or you could do it from the previous menu that we saw before. And clicking on the meters bar here, you can change the volume either from headphones or speaker. If you swipe to the side, you get this menu, which I rarely use. This is like metadata entry. Uh, you can do stuff like clips or like whole projects. So add a director name or company name, for example, like mine would be catalog here. Um, I guess this is more useful for people on big film sets with lots of cameras, um, but I don't really use it at all. Now, if you have flickering lights in HFR mode, there's two ways you can fix this. Uh, one would be changing the shutter angle. Uh, which you can do here. And if using one of the presets doesn't work, then you can double tap on the number and input a manual shutter speed or shutter angle. If you still have issues with strobing or flickering, then you can try changing the FPS. You can use this slider. Uh, I find that sometimes 40, 42 work. Um, sometimes 48, it really depends on the frequency of the light. So uh, I guess have a little go and see if you can eliminate the flickering in your footage. So that's how I like to set up my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. How do you like to set up yours? I would love to know what settings that you do differently to me. I think the only thing I didn't show in that was some of the overlays that I use. I, I typically have the horizon on most of the time, even though it's not as great as some of the other camera systems like a Sony or a Panasonic's kind of the horizon level thing. You know, it gives me a crosshair and it kind of tells me if I'm not on straight or whatever. So that's probably the only feature that I would have on most of the time. You know, other times I may use uh, frame guides because um, if, if doing stuff like Instagram or vertical video or like, you know, square or anything, it's useful to have that information on the screen to know where you should be placing your things in the frame. And that's the only things. And that, that that's not what I have on all the time. So, you know, it's a by job by job basis. But yeah, that's pretty much all I do. I hope this video was useful. Uh, if it was, Give this video a like, subscribe for more content just like this. Uh, we're at over 300 subscribers now, so I'm super happy. Thanks to everyone who's been subscribing and watching all the videos. I love you guys. Um, more content is on the way. So uh, stick around, and I'll see you in the next one.